Today we're diving into something that is absolutely essential for serious Quest content creators, the MetaQuest Developer Hub. But before we dive into today's tutorial, for this video's sponsor spot, I want to tell you about MetaQuest Plus, a quick way to build your VR game library. With MetaQuest Plus, you get instant access to over 20 plus premium games on day one, plus new titles added monthly. If you're looking for fresh games to cover without having to buy them all individually, MetaQuest Plus gives you an excellent value. You can get a three month trial with a new Quest 3S purchase, or try it for one month free if you already own a headset. Check out the link in the description to start your trial today. If you've ever wanted to capture high quality footage from your Quest headset, this is the tool you'll need to master. First things first, you can't use the MetaQuest Developer Hub without being registered as a developer first. But don't worry, you don't actually need to be a developer in order to do this. Head over to developer.oculus.com slash manage slash organization slash create and make sure you're also logged in with the account tied to your quest. They may ask you to verify your account by setting up two-factor or by adding a credit card. This is just for verification. They won't actually charge you anything. Once you're verified, you'll create an organization name. It can be anything, even just your name, and accept the NDA. Now grab your phone and open up the Meta Horizon app. You'll need to enable developer mode on your headset. With your headset turned on, tap the devices icon, select your quest, and scroll down until you find developer mode. Toggle that on, and we're halfway there. Now to get the MetaQuest Developer Hub installed. You'll find it with a quick Google search. I'll drop the link in the description. Download the version for your system. It works on both Windows or Mac. Once the MetaQuest Developer Hub is installed, launch it and log into your Meta account. While the Developer Hub does offer wireless functionality, you'll need to physically connect your Quest to your PC with a USB cable first. And this isn't just a one-time thing. Every time you turn on your headset, you'll need to connect it to your PC initially to enable the wireless toggle. Once you've done that initial connection, you can unplug it and use it wirelessly until the next time you turn off your headset. First, something really important about audio recording. The MetaQuest Developer Hub does not capture your microphone audio. This means that if you plan on doing any commentary or voiceover while recording, you'll need some sort of external microphone setup. I personally recommend something like the ModMic Wireless or a wireless Rode microphone. You'll need to sync your audio with your footage in post-production. Now let me walk you through my personal workflow and all the recording settings available in the MetaQuest Developer Hub. After turning on the headset, I connect it to my PC. Then I enable ADB over Wi-Fi. I click Cast and select Cinematic Mode. Then I disconnect the USB from my headset, launch the game and make sure it works fine in cinematic mode, then hit record up at the top of the casting window once ready. While cinematic mode is my personal favorite way to record first person view, sometimes it doesn't work with some games for whatever reason. You'll know if it doesn't work because your game might get stuck in a loading screen or black screen and maybe you'll just hear some music or sounds but the game isn't loading properly. If this happens, just switch to another aspect ratio either original or cropped instead, as cinematic mode probably isn't supported. In that case, it may also be just easier to record straight from the headset instead. And if for some reason, after you close out the MetaQuest Developer Hub and you still have this issue, try restarting your headset. You can also use the Developer Hub casting window for live streaming. Just capture it as a source in your broadcasting software like OBS or Streamlabs OBS. Looking at the potential settings, let's start with target bitrate. You've got several options. Auto lets the developer hub decide based on your setup. 20 is a good for saving space. 40 is what I use. It's a good balance of quality and file size. 60 is for extra high quality and 80 gives you maximum quality, but huge file sizes. For target frame rate, you can choose auto, which adapts to your game. 24 frames per second. 30, it's smooth enough for most content. 60 is great, super smooth, and best for fast paced games. 120 is also an option, though it's usually unnecessary in my opinion, unless you're creating slow motion footage in post. Capture format is simpler with just two options. Let's start with auto, which is what I use. This is a safe bet in most situations. When you're using auto, the developer hub will automatically adjust the recording quality based on how your system is performing. The big advantage here is stability. You're less likely to run into performance issues or dropped frames. The trade-off is that you might see some variation in quality during your recording, especially if your quest starts getting stressed. Max is exactly what it sounds like. It records at the highest possible quality your headset can manage. This setting is better if you're creating professional content like game trailers. The footage you get will be much easier to work with in post, giving you more flexibility with color grading and effects. 
However, your file sizes will be huge. It also puts more strain on your headset, which might lead to performance issues or cause your headset to heat up faster during longer recording sessions. For cropping, you've got three choices, original or square format. Cropped and cinematic, which is my preferred option when it works. It gives the best looking output with a wider field of view. Also remember to set your selected eye to match your dominant eye. This can help make your recordings look more centered, especially for shooting games when you look down a sight. Once you've set your video settings like bitrate and frame rate, they'll stay the same until you change them. You won't need to adjust these every time, unlike the wireless setting and the casting cropping. Another interesting feature on the casting window is input forwarding. It lets you control your game scene using your keyboard and mouse. For example, you can right click and drag to look around or use the WASD keys to move through the environment. However, I wouldn't advise wearing your headset while in this mode, otherwise you're in for a pretty nauseating experience because your headset view stays locked in place while the game view moves around. This feature can be a bit hit or miss. It works better in some games than others, and sometimes it might not work exactly as you'd expect. But I wanted to point it out because I think there's some potential here for getting certain camera angles or exploring environments in a different way. Your recordings are all saved directly on your Quest, so getting them can be a little annoying. First, connect your Quest to your PC, look for the bell notification icon in your Meta dashboard and click that. Click on the USB connection prompt, open the MetaQuest folder on your PC, navigate to the Documents folder, and that's where you'll find all your recordings. While the MetaQuest Developer Hub is an incredibly useful tool, it's not without its quirks. You might occasionally run into some weird bugs, like losing your microphone audio in games while it's running, or having issues with mixed reality captures turning your room black instead of actually capturing your room. The good news is that these issues usually get fixed within eventual updates, although sometimes these updates can introduce new bugs too. My advice, when the MetaQuest Developer Hub asks you to update, maybe wait a week or two and see if other content creators are reporting issues with the current version. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to do the thing, like and subscribe, drop a comment if you have any questions, and as always, keep on creating and never lose that drive to improve. I'll see you in the next one.